I've been trying to come up with a, a name for this idea. And I think, based on the title down here, you can tell, I think I'm going to go with uh, Abstraction of Opportunity. Uh, which, when abbreviated, is going to be very confusing for people who still say Attack of Opportunity, as opposed to Opportunity Attack. That's okay, because those are largely 3rd edition players, and I don't mind confusing them. Uh, it's... Oh, man, I am off track already. Anyways, the abstraction of opportunity. This is uh, a sort of... It, it's a philosophy about how game design, uh, specific rules mechanics, interact with the narrative that is being generated or is being represented by those mechanics. Um, so it's it's like... It's, it's an idea related to the communication between game mechanic and narrative. Uh, and it's a thing that I think is necessary for games that are supposed to be crunchy and mechanically interesting, but also not so heavy that you need to keep track of absolutely every individual thing. It's a shorthand. It is uh, uh, making things easier for the player in a sort of mechanically satisfying way um, without it becoming bogged down too much. So what this is, uh, and I, I have talked about this in previous videos, but I wanted to make a whole video just on this because I think it's an important topic to remember, and it has recently come up in other discussions. Um, so when you have a limited use ability for something that is not a spell, so, for example, uh, the Barbarian Rage abilities. Um, uh, you, <coughs> you have uh, uh, Action Surge. Um, you have uh, Key uh, for the Monk. Um, things like that. Limited use abilities that are not spells. Or, or resource pools that are not spells. What happens is sometimes you run into this idea or, or this, this question of like, well, I did this. Why can't I do it again? If it's something my character can do, why can't I do it over and over? It's not magic. It doesn't need to recharge. It's not a battery. That's not how humans work. And certainly there are limits. Like you can you can go above your sustainable limit for a brief duration, but it, often these kinds of abilities don't feel that way. You know, so like the battle masters uh, uh, special maneuvers, they can only be used a certain number of times before you have to rest to recharge them, and that doesn't feel intuitive as a non-magical thing because that's not really how humans work. You can push yourself a lot, so if you're able to do something once, you can probably do it more than just a couple of times, even like as a normal human being. And so you think these, you know, fantasy adventurers, why can't they? So the abstraction of opportunity is a way to answer that question. But it, you have to go on a little bit of a journey. So in actual combat, there are going to be... You, you have like your, your basic move set, which is your sort of reliable, I can always do this kind of, kind of move sets. You know, your basic defenses, your basic parries, your basic attacks, things like that. Then you also have more situational moves. Uh, you have, like, a, an attack that you can throw under certain circumstances, which you may or may not be able to engineer. But you can't, like, it's definitely not going to work on a normal opponent under normal baseline assumed conditions. Um, you know, so I have, like, this attack that's going to, that only works if the opponent is in a low guard and I'm able to sort of move offline to them and they don't correct right away, they don't correct fast enough, then I have like this, this quick high shot that's going to be especially dangerous to that opponent in that circumstance. But that setup doesn't happen very often. I can expect it to happen on average once a fight, you know, with multiple opponents, you know, uh, uh, I should be able to expect about one opportunity to do this thing. There's a word, opportunity, as part of our of our term because we are abstracting how often that opportunity comes up now you can certainly have abilities that say oh this only works on each opponent once but then you have to track which opponents you've used it on and in a lot of circumstances you have about as many turns as there are enemies or fewer 
which means that it has functionally become an at-will ability. I can use it once per enemy, but it, as long as an enemy dies about once per round, I can just move on and keep doing it every single turn. So that is mechanically dissatisfying for a number of reasons. You could say you can use it, uh, uh, you know, once an enemy sees you use it, you can't use this again. But that is even more complicated to track. You know, can that guy see me? Can that guy see me? And you have to track it on multiple enemies. And it, it largely comes down to being the same thing as being able to just use it once per encounter. Most, like, if, if you say that like, you can use it on, an, uh, or once an enemy sees you use this ability, they are immune to it because they, they know what you're going to do. You can't do it again. Uh, that works out to be a once per encounter ability just with more things to track. Like, it's just slightly more complicated for no reason. So, once per encounter abilities are abilities that require certain circumstances that should come up on average about once per encounter. Daily abilities can be rationalized the same way. They are more specific, more powerful, but more niche. Those circumstances, the circumstances that you need to use these abilities, should come up about once a day. You know, whether that is, you know, uh, one big fight, or if it is many smaller fights, once per day, you're going to find an opportunity to use this ability. On average. You know, maybe maybe not every day. Because it's like you might make it to the end of the day without using all of your daily abilities. And so, you know, that the opportunity didn't arise. Even though, like, out of game, it is the player choosing when to use these things. So this gives you the best of both worlds. It explains why these limited use abilities are, in fact, limited use. But it also maintains player agency. The player gets to decide when the circumstances are right to use these abilities. I find this as a fully satisfactory explanation for limited use abilities that aren't like magical recharging abilities. Um, but I understand that it is a level of abstraction further than a, what a lot of people are able to accept or maybe even understand. Um, because a lot of like... I, I've had tried to have this conversation with people on Reddit, uh, and predictably, a lot of people just don't get it. They don't accept it. Which, sure, I mean, that's that's your game, but it is fundamentally like uh, it is an acceptable. Acceptable is not the right word. It is a, just as viable an explanation for why you can't use something over and over and over as any other. Um, and I call it the the abstraction of opportunity because we're we're taking <clears throat> we're taking this the the opportunity to use things that can't work all the time, and we're giving the agency for when that opportunity comes up to the player, and it's sort of abstracting it, you know, uh, because we don't know exactly what the triggering conditions of these special abilities are. We don't want to know. We don't want the game to be that complex, you know, to have different guards and to have, like, reactive shifting of attention. We kind of hand wave all that. That's all abstract anyways, you know. AC includes a lot of things like, you know, are you taking the right guard versus this attack? Uh, are you going to parry? Are you going to block? Can you dodge? Do you have natural armor? All these things. It's super abstract already. Uh, the game, like D&D &D always has been. And so we're just sort of taking advantage of that and saying, okay, sometimes you get to use these abilities and you get to choose when those sometimes are. Um, and that is a perfectly serviceable explanation for non-at-will, non-spell abilities. And that's why when people talk about how, like, uh, fighters and, and martial characters having special moves, special maneuvers, super attacks that are only usable once a day. Like, oh, well, that's basically just spells. Oh, it's so anime. That's what they do. That is actually what they sound like. Um, to that, I say, like, no, this is actually the more realistic representation of combat. You have special moves that are only used in certain circumstances. And you need to wait for those circumstances to use them. I do uh, sword fighting as a hobby 
this is a real thing. And so, in, in ironically, 4th edition D&D has a better representation of martial combat than 5th edition does. Because in 5th edition, martial combat is just, I'm going to do the same attack over and over and over with no variation. That's, it's not only not realistic, it's also boring. So, worst of both worlds on that. But I just, I did want to, like, sort of lay down the, the groundwork for this idea, this abstraction of opportunity, as a way to change the way that you think about the relationship between mechanics and narrative. Because it's something that a lot of people have a hard time wrapping their head around, which I find fascinating. Because uh, this is something that the, uh, I don't think any of the 4th edition books actually even touch on this. They don't mention it. It's not an idea that they have proposed. Uh, it is something that I sort of intuited as I was learning the, the game originally. Um, and it has sort of become my default canon explanation for all of these kinds of abilities. Um, but a lot of people have a problem with it. Um, so, I don't know. That's... The, the abstraction of opportunity is a, a, it's such a, a good explanation. It's kind of like in uh, like you have your, your fandom and there's a plot hole. but the the community comes up with such a good explanation for that plot hole, it might as well be Canon because there's no never going to be a better explanation. That's what I think that the abstraction of opportunity is for non-spell cooldown effects or cooldown mechanics for martial characters. That's how I feel about it. Uh, if you disagree, let me know in the comments or join my Discord server and we'll talk about it. Bye.